welcome back to my Crusader for Lefties channel. Today we are going to start off our series on the Granny Sprayer. And the Granny Sprayer is really simple to make. All you need to know is the double crochet and chaining. What you will need is a size 5.5 millimeter hook. You will need some yarn, some scissors, and a tapestry needle for weaving in all your ends. Once you have all of those materials, let's head on with the table and get started. See you soon! To begin the granny square, we are going to start from the very center. And every granny square starts off that way. And we are not going to do a circle. We are going to be doing a chain of six. Six stitches into that chain and then start off with our very first cell. So let's go ahead, get our yarn and our hook, and get started. Once we have our slip knot ready, we are just going to start by chaining six. And as you get better with each mini square, you can lower that amount down to four, maybe even three. We are now going to take the very first stitch that we made, slip stitch right into the back of that bump. Yarn over. And pull through. And you have just created the center of your granny square. For row one, we are going to chain three. And that will count as your first Double crochet. Now that we have our chain three, we are going to do two more double crochets, and that will be our first group or our first cell. So go ahead and do two more double crochets right into that ring. And if you need to, you can poke your finger right into that hole to hold it. And two. So there is our first cell. One, two, three. The good rule of thumb is that every cell will have three double crochets in it. We are going to chain two to form our corner and then do another three double crochets. So this is what your square should start looking like. You've got your corner right there and that is your chain two. And then you just did another three double crochets right there. And now we are ready to do our second corner. So just chain two. And do another group of double crochets. And what I like to do, and I have heard that this is also recommended with other patterns for the granny square, is that if you run out of space, just do that to your double crochet and then it will also form the little corner. So just give your double crochets a nice little tug and it will give you more space in your little ring. There's two and three. We are going to chain two again for our corner. There we go. And then do one last double group of double crochets. Now meet you back when you've got three double crochets. 
So I'm finishing up my last level per se for this little cell. And to finish off this row, we want to chain two for the last corner. So there's two. And then what we want to do now is slip stitch to the top of the chain three. And that will form row one. So there we go. There is our tiny center square. Now if you want, you can just take the corners and spread them out like that. Just to give it a little bit more shape. But that's what it should start to look like. Row 2 and every row following this will start off in the corner. And in order to do that, we need to slip stitch across the next two, the next two double crochets. So there's one, there's two, and then we're going to slip stitch right into that corner space. And here, we are going to start our corner. What we want to do is chain three and do two more double crochets into that space. And that will form the first shell of the row. And just like before, we are going to chain two. On a corner and do another group of three to form our second shell within our little space. And as I said before, if you need to, you can just tie those little double crochets together to give yourself some more space. And then three. So there is our second shell. We will now chain one to act as a spacer between each cell because there's one right here and then work into the next space. Once you have the cell, chain two and do another shell and continue the pattern all the way until you reach your last shell. Now we'll meet you back at the end of row two. All right, I have just finished my last shell. And so what I want to do now is chain one because we do that at the end of every shell to act as a spacer. Now what we want to do is look for that chain three and slip stitch right at the top. And if you need to, lay your cassette hook down and just tap on the quarters to give it some more shape. And that is the end of row two. For the rest of the next several rows, if you want to make your square bigger, you're just going to follow the formula that I'm going to show you for row 3. And what you want to do is slip stitch through the next couple of double crochets until you reach the corner. And then slip stitch right into 
at corner space. Now, you remember your chain three. Your two more double crochets into that space. And chain two. And then one more group of three double crochets right into that space. And that forms the corner of the square. So just remember, so, which means a group of three, chain two, and then so, which is another group of three double crochets. And three. So now that you have your third double crochet, you will want to chain one to act as the spacer. And then right into this little corner space right here, which isn't really a corner, you want to do one cell. Or one group of uh, three double crochets. And then in the next corner, you would just do a group of three, chain two, and then do another group of three. And you will continue that all the way until you reach your last group of three. So at the end of this cell, we're just going to chain one for the spacer, and then continue on doing our corners. So go ahead, and I will meet you back at the end of row three. To finish off row three, we landed on a space between our rows, and we did a double three. Now what we want to do is chain one, for the spacer and then slip stitch right into the top of that chain three. And that will be the end for row three. Row four is going to be my last row of increasing, but you guys can continue on and do five, six, seven, eight, nine, or how many more rows that you want to add. And your square can be big or small. And the main difference is that in between each corner is the number of cells that you will be making. Now for row 4, you will have 2. Because just like with row 3, you had 1. And for row 4, you will have 2 because it's adding one more in between each row. So that may sound a little bit confusing, so I'll just go ahead and show you guys. Row 4. So slip stitch into the next two spaces and right into that corner. Then you want to chain 3. And do your two groups of three plus your two chains. You I chain three. I'm gonna do my shell. If that's what it's technically called. Here's my third. Chain two. And do one more shell right into that corner. And 
and everything too. And three. All right. Go ahead and chain one. And let's take a look. Into each of these two spaces, we are going to do one cell or one group of three. And you are doing double crochets into each of these two spaces. And you will see later on that it increases by one with each row. And then we were just continuing adding a spacer in between each cell. So chain one for the spacer and then go into the next space. And do a group of three. There's two. three. Chain one. And work into the corner. So that is how you guys do row four. And I will meet you back at the end of row four. So just a quick note, as you can see here, there are three spaces, whereas in row three, there were two. So that's what I mean by an increase by one. I went ahead and I chained one for my spacer and I snipped off my yarn. So now what I want to do to finish off my row and my project is slip my hook through the top of that chain three. And finish it off with a slip stitch. And if you want, you can just yarn over, pull through, and weave in your tail. And that is how you make a little granny square. To weave in your ends, you want to take your yarn needle, thread it through with your tail, and then carefully insert it through the first three stitches. Like that. Pull it through. And then you want to do it a couple more times just so that it will be secure. But don't pull it too tight or else it will scrunch up your work. So once ahead. Find that stitch, slide it through, like that, and pull through. And just for your measure, do it one more time. And there we go. And you can just snip off the rest of it. And that is what your green spray will look like at the end.